So if you're a pocket-based dev, you've probably created a few CRUD apps in your time, but I'm here to break down some of the more advanced techniques that you're going to come across in pocket base. Now the documentation is the first stop for anything. Um, and first step is to download a pocket base instance, which you can do by going to GitHub and then releases. I'm downloading that, or you can also just download it directly from here, but I'm going to run you through uh, exactly how to set up some advanced techniques. So we're looking at pocket base hooks. We're looking at collections. We're looking at how to do our authentication. And lastly, we'll be looking at extending with Go. First step, let's take a look at how we can get started with pocket base. I've got a pocket base instance here. So we go pocket base. This is something you've probably done before, but we just need to provision it. We open our instance up here, Sam at the best.dev at test one three four five test one three four five and we'll get that and we'll run that and we've got our instance here. Now let's close down our instance for a moment and let's take a look at p creating a pb underscore hooks directory. Now pb underscore hooks um, as defined under the overview for extending with JavaScript is the primary way that we can access uh, the backend JavaScript engine running in Pocketbase. And we do this by creating a file here called main.pb.js. And in this main.pb.js, we're going to just follow what we've got here, which is creating this router. So we'll add this router in here. And this is going to give us the ability to um, have an additional route on the end of this um, URL here. So I'm just going to bring this one up here and we'll pop this here and we'll just add this in. Uh, we'll get rid of that additional param there. And then I'll just explain what everything, everything that's happening here. So we've got uh, main.pb.js um, at all of these functions which are in here are automatically called. So we could have multiple um, like goodbye here. And these will all be picked up and called by um, by pocket base. So we can get rid of that for now. Um, but this route will be attached directly onto the end of this one here. So if we um, run this now, it should open and keep in mind, we have to rerun it once we've created the PB underscore hooks. If we don't, it's not going to come up. Um, but I'll show you because we do get, we don't have to do this every time. It's just at the start because we do get some stuff out of the box. So I'm going to jump into here. I'm going to put in our route, which we just created. And we can see we've got this new route when we hit that URL. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and what we're doing here is getting this dynamic parameter and then getting from that dynamic parameter and using JavaScript to insert that into our JSON return message. We can change this return message to be pure HTML as well. Um, that's certainly an option we can do. So if I just get rid of all of this and then I'm going to put in a template literal here um, with that name and then I'm going to preface it with this h1 tag and um, this h1 tag on the end here too. If I can type properly. And then we'll see that we've actually got this pb change restarting. So it automatically restarts the instance, which is cool. Um, and then we can run this directly from here and we see that we've got the pb um, hook actually serving up this HTML. Really powerful stuff. With this way of building, you don't need to build with a um, with an actual framework. You can just serve stuff up like this. Um, obviously, there's some caveats to this. There's some things that you wouldn't want to do, um, but this is a good, simple example. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is a not so simple example of how I use um, PB hooks. So, taking a look at, um, I've got this this pocket base instance here, which is set to display a bunch of advertisements for uh, different sorts of pets. And this, these advertisements all have a specific location. You know, we've got Dawes Point, North Beach, Boyer, um, and these are all different locations in Australia. If we want to only serve ads which are in a certain location, 
we need a hook to do that. So I've got this API, which I've defined here with the underscore API, or sorry, with the backslash API there and nearby ads. And what this does is it takes in a bunch of um, params that I go and fetch um, directly out. So I'll just show you. Um, so here I get the location and from the location, I extract the um, latitude and longitude. Um, and then I go and look for all of the different latitude and longitude, which are within a 50 K radius using some, um, calculate, uh, some trigonometry math. And then that goes and pulls in all of those things and then returns a list of advertisements within a radius. So I could say, get everything within, you know, San Francisco within a 50 kilometer radius of, of San Francisco and We'll go through and do that. Um, so pretty cool stuff, but this was one of these breakaway examples where I had to just not use the CRUD um, application um, of Pocketbase and actually go and experiment on my own. Hope this helps. Um, the next thing I wanna cover is how do we look at user authentication? So user authentication is one of those tricky ones where um, people can get lost. I know that I got lost, so I hope this helps. Basically, the, if we go to show available fields, we've got all of these following fields available and these fields directly correspond to everything on the collection, which isn't, isn't obvious um, initially, even though it says these are the record fields. What record field means? These IDs, usernames, emails, those are, those are what's checked. And the request, anything with this at symbol in front of it is special in Pocketbase. These requests refer to um, these refer to the uh, the actual authenticated request, and it's it's really poignant to um, specify what we mean by authenticated versus authorized. So, authorization is what we're doing here, which is saying these users only have certain access to certain resources, but they're already authenticated. So. Whenever a user runs a request, um, they will have this at request, which has these properties attached to it. Um, so if this came from uh, from an anonymous uh, source, there would be no auth ID. Um, so an anonymous source will, will not be able to update any records, um, but a an actual source will be able to come in and edit their own record because there has to be um, a direct match on their own record. Um, some things to note that you can do in here, you could have this as well as a um, another thing saying um, if you wanted, to, if you had like a collection that you wanted to go through, um, you could go through the collection and then take a look at say, let's just say you had some secret users, so secret users.id and you could make sure that the id matches that particular subset of users so this allows for adding a bit more complexity to um, your filtering um, so that only so if you're doing like role-based stuff like this would be where you would do it where you'd say like look i only want users in this collection to be able to access this this is this is what that's about now they're taking a look at the documentation for a moment. You'll see that we've got a few different, um, so I've already discussed the request. So you can actually access the data on the request. So anything submitted to make sure that nothing is being updated that you don't want. Um, this could be some, for some validation or, or what have you. Um, but you've, you've got these different parameters here. You'll see that I use that and parameter to, to add on um, additional um, queries there. Um, but you've also got con uh, things like a contains and a, a, and a not contains. And then these are your special parameters. Um, uh, and you've also got this is set. So um, if someone's trying to update uh, something that they shouldn't be, so there might be stuff which you don't want the user to update, like, I don't know, like, let's say we didn't want them to update their username. Um, we could say, um, at request dot data dot, um, dot username, 
is set equals false. And then that will prevent them. And then you've got some length modifiers. This each one will go through and check for um, sub the, the data. It's basically an iterator through. If you've got a, an array, you can go through each of the items in the array. Um, and then, yeah, that's how you do that. Now, this this is pretty powerful, but it doesn't help with um, hiding user... Um, uh, do we? Yeah, this doesn't help with hiding um, specific fields on a user. So I've got my phone number here, um, and I really don't want uh, anyone to be able to see my phone number. So what I might do is I might go um, create a new collection down here, and then I might go to po uh, I might call this uh, limited user, and then view collection, and then here we can actually do any SQL like command that we want. So I'm just going to go select and I'm going to go ID and then uh, I think I'm going to go display name here. And then we'll go from and then we'll add uh, from uh, user. And then now if I create that, we're going to be able to get create a collection that only certain um, properties are going to be available for people to to see. This is super powerful because now you don't have to um, display everything in a full collection. Um, you can hide the underlying collections which are being updated and just make your reads only done from these limited ones. Um, super, super powerful stuff. So now let's take a look at uh, the final thing that I wanted to show you guys, which is extending Pocketbase. Now, Pocketbase is not an easy one to extend, but um, I'm going to do my best to show you how. So first thing we're going to do is create a Pocketbase underscore extend uh, directory here, and I'm going to create a new file, and we're going to call this file main.go, and we're going to close out of our Pocketbase instance here, and we're going to change our directory in the terminal to this extend. We're going to check our version of Go by going Go version. If you don't have Go installed, you need to go and install that. And we can do that by going to the extend with Go docs here, install Go 1.2.1. And we're just gonna take directly from this, uh, this file here, what they've got directly in here, and we're gonna add it. And then we're going to, to um, install and run this. So, uh, the essence of Go is that you've got all of these packages declared directly. We're going to run this Go init my app, and this is going to go through and download all of these packages and provision everything so that we can run it. Then finally, we're going to um, compile and serve it directly. And this file here does give you everything that you need to get started with Pocketbase, but it doesn't give you the ability to use JavaScript hooks alongside Pocketbase. So while that's doing its stuff, oh, it just finished. Um, okay, let me finish this, and then we go go run serve. And this is going to take a few seconds. But while we do, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to run this other one here. Um, I'm going to add our ability to set up our Pocketbase hooks, and this is not included in the documentation, but it's something I ran into. And you got to add this one here. So this is the um, JSVM.must register app. Now, important thing to note with all of these hooks, right? Um, the the things that you're going to be using all run on um, Goja, which it runs from Go. So if you're running your pocket-based hooks or anything like that um, using, using um, JavaScript, you're not going to have access to the same engine but you must register it here. Um, and we can see that we've actually served this one up um, directly from this file. So we're going to save this here. We're going to move our pb underscore hooks into our extended file, and we're going to rerun it. And we'll get this undefined JSVM, and that's because we've also got to add in the plugin. So Pocketbase has a series of plugins that um, we can add. So we're going to add that in there. And we're going to run, uh, we're going to run GoMod 
tidy. Um, and I think, have we saved that? Um, this should, should install. That's all right. Okay. I think it's, I think it's running. Maybe that just installed really quickly. Um, and then now we can go back to our main.pb and see if we can run this again and it runs. So if we don't do this, um, and by this, I mean, if we don't add in this JVM must register, we're not going to have access to our hooks. So yeah, this is super important. Um, guys, I hope this helps you in getting started. This is just some of the uh, more advanced techniques that you'll come across in Pocketbase. Uh, I have been working with Pocketbase for a couple of years now, and I really, really love this platform. So if there's any questions that you have or anything I didn't cover, which you might not know about, um, uh, or you just need someone to chinwag with, yeah, just reach out to me and I'll, um, I'll, I'll do my best to explain things. Uh, if you want to know more news about Pocketbase or news about cool stuff in development, uh, particularly in open source development, uh, consider subscribing to my newsletter. That's where I'm basically disseminating all the information that I'm learning and, and um, showcasing it to, to everyone. And yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff there. So hopefully you can check that out and I'll see you in the next one.